Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Play It Painted Live. Time for another live stream. Let me go ahead and let me see if we can get Andrew on the stream here. So I'm just going to send him the link to the Hangout. We'll see if he uh, accepts and if he's going to hop on. <clears throat> We're going to do a little building tonight, as the title of the stream suggests. I don't know how much actual painting will get done, but let's just see. And I'm going to open up my uh, comment section right now. And let's just see what we can get. Uh, so I hope you guys are having a good night. I was trying to hop on a little earlier. Had to put the little baby to sleep. He's having some trouble, but we're much better now. Okay. So, <clears throat> there's that. Now we're going to, I got to stamp the bases. Albert T, did you get sick? Yes, I did. You can hear it in my voice, can't you? <laughs> okay. So, um, my LGS ran out of my favorite bases. So we're stuck using uh, Guild Ball bases, which are okay, but I have to, you know, you have to fill in this, uh, uh, you got to fill in the slot, and it really kind of gets annoying. Yo, what's up, Andrew? Yo, what up, Octave? Uh, shoot. Where'd my, where'd my hobby knife go? Hey, we on. We are on, man. Let's see. Let me just uh, throw my one light source in the entire room. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, my computer. Maybe I shouldn't just move it. Hold up. I'm just gonna. Whoop. I don't know if that's gonna bother anything or anybody. It's a. Uh, it's a little like a yeah. flare on the screen. Yeah. It's not terrible. Hold up. I got an idea. We'll figure this out. Got it. Where's yeah. that? My hobby knife. I can't find anything right now. Man. Okay. It's a little scary. This feed is already kind of a failure. <laughs> uh, it's all good. I can't find. Hold up. Let me figure something out with this light real quick. Ooh. Yeah, go for it. Well, I'm looking for my for my blade. <sighs> So I like to, I like to have that light for like, up close and personal model look. All right. Let's see. <clears throat> okay. So just. Whoo. Okay. I got it. So before we do any of the actual building, yeah, I'm just gonna clean up my plastic buddy in the slot of bases here, cause. You want these to be as flat as possible after you fill them. Ah. That's really annoying because it just, when you don't have a, a nice, like, flat, like, if you, you know, these weird bases are perfect because yeah. they don't have the slot in them. And you can just stand, you can stamp them. And you always know, like, for example, I've done this so many times, I know exactly how much putty I need. And I can make sure that they stamp um, nice and even. But this way, it's kind of a mess because, like, this oh, isn't even fully dry yet. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenge getting all this and get all that, like, gunk there. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a little bit of a challenge stamping it. But that's okay. We'll see what we can, what we can do here. And I also have to decide what style of stamp I want. I think nice. I know what I want, though. Okay. Yeah, I do it the getaway, where I <laughs> cut out the extra metal and just like <laughs> fill it in the crack. I, you know, I did it that way once. It was okay. This is about the same. This nets you about the same result, unfortunately. Okay. So now we're going to make some putty. Very nice. I wet my palette a little bit, and I painted up one of these trap thingies already. Oh, cool. So, 
I just put tons of static grass on it. Oh, nice. So, nice and simple. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do all the traps first because those take, like, no time. It's just silver, paint the ground, little wash. Okay. Cool. All right. We get our little epoxy sculpt. See, now I'm kind of... Not, there's a little bit of guesswork here because I don't know how well that drying plastic putty is going to hold. So I'm not entirely sure how much of this I need to mix. Nice, cool sound, whatever that was. Oh, yeah, that was my phone. <laughs> All right, that's probably way too much. Probably about. So you you do like. You guess how much it's gonna be, and then divide it in half. All right. So these are about the size of a kernel of corn. That's about the size of a pea. Ah. And then you double it. Right, because you get two parts to the epoxy. So you get that part down. All right. <clears throat> this gray stuff is weird because it's the same color, so it's really hard to know when you've actually mixed it all thoroughly. It does get a little warm in your hand, though, so that's a little bit of a clue. All right. Nice. All right, so there's that. I'm just super bummed that Comet Quest did not have the bases that I usually need. Who I'm makes them? I'll cry about it a little bit. Weird makes them. Ah. So I may just order a bunch. All right, so let's mix this up. Let's see how far we can get with this. So you're already in the painting process, right? Yeah. Like, I... Assembled. Assembled, primed. Nice. Yeah, that army painter stuff's actually pretty good. I was shocked. Cool. It goes on really thin and like it dries super fast. So I mean it's the best of both worlds, but I mean it's fifteen bucks, so what do you expect? That's true. Okay. So let's see if I can make enough with this gob here. About the size of a kernel of corn. You would need you need that much for a weird base which is perfectly flat. You need mm. probably a little bit more than that for these bases because you're going to lose some down the... Uh, I don't know how to say this. Down the cornhole. Down the <laughs> slot. Yeah, goes down the cornhole. <laughs> yeah, the rabbit hole, you know? It never yeah. comes back. So there's that. Okay. So I'm going to do just a little bit more than I typically do. And unfortunately, that means these are probably not going to stamp the best. Mm. They're probably they're probably going to spill over a little bit and I, that kind of, that's kind of a bummer. All right. Let's do that. Turn this I have my fan conveniently placed so I can just dry my paint <laughs> whenever I need. <laughs> All right, and okay, and I still have a bunch left over. I might have to find some more bases just to stamp real quick. Or not. Like I did have, I did have some weird forties, so I can do those. I'm gonna stamp two of those in addition to everything else I'm stamping. <coughs> it's actually gonna be more like, um, yeah, that's gonna be. Th they're gonna be super thin. But that's okay. A pro. Eh. Let's see if I can. I'm just gonna fudge. 
boxes, any that look a little bit bigger than they need to be. Kind of make them the same. Okay. All right. So now we're going to try to make these into the nice, wonderful little pancakes that we do. If you're just tuning in, welcome to Play It Painted Live. Let us know what you're painting and what you should be painting. Tonight's stuff is Guild Ball stuff. So we're working on Guild Ball stuff with Andrew Yo. from the Brothers, oh, Brothers of War. Yeah. yeah. I need to resurrect that channel, man. It's been dead for like two years. <clears throat> yeah, I need to. So I was going to tell you, like the plan is, or my plan is, I need to wire some better overhead lighting here in this game room at my place. And if we do that, then, uh, then we'll be in pretty good shape to like start streaming or doing battle reports and that kind of stuff. Nice. So I want to I want to do that from here. So, and it would be nice too because my wife has kind of asked, "Hey, can we do? Can you do some of your weekly weekly gaming at home? That way, you know, if I need you, you're here." So, and I totally get that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm so thinking I'm gonna resurrect my channel with Guild Ball. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I was thinking about it a lot, and I was like, oh, this seems like something I'd be happy to film and like do with you guys and Cody and stuff. Like that. <clears throat> yeah, Guild Ball it streams really nicely too. Like, it's a good game to watch. A lot of um, skirmish games or miniature games are tough to stream because of the, you know, usually the alternating activations and there's a lot of terrain. Uh, Guild Ball does have a lot of stuff to follow, but it's usually the way the game flows is each player is declaring everything as they go. So it's very clean. Like, it's a very clean game to follow if you're just watching. Yeah, I agree with that because it's like, it's basically like a sport, you know, you got the play by plays and whenever mm -hmm. you're attacking, it's literally like, oh, when base attack is five and then I yeah. charge you. So plus four and then I get a crowd out. So plus one. So like people can learn on the fly by just people talking about the game, you know? Right. Let's see where that other trap. And, and also like a lot of times the other player will kind of figure out what the the player is trying to attempting to do. So like, for example, I knew like the game I was playing with Cody, I knew he was trying to kill a model. So I would keep him updated and say, okay, this model has this many health left. And so he knew like what, so we both knew like what results he was aiming for on his playbook. And it, it's just a nice clean game that way. It's not like, there's not like uh some crazy mystery behind, you know, what each player is doing. And then when you, so when you watch it, you can kind of pick up, if you play Guild Ball yourself, you kind of pick up, okay, this, this player is trying to do this right now based on uh, the actions he's taking and what he's selecting in the playbook. Oh yeah, I completely agree. And like, you could tell someone's going just for straight momentum. Like, mm -hmm. they're not going to be picking the damage I uh, icons. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll do a knockdown <laughs> momentous. Yeah. And then it's like, I'll be doing a uh, a push momentous. And yeah. They're not even going for damage. They're just trying to get, like, as much momentum on you as possible. Because, like, yeah, a lot of the casters and, like, the players and stuff like that have momentous damage abilities. But really, like only the big heavy hitters have like momentous three damage or something like that. So it's not worth it to do momentous. Or butchers. Oh yeah, well, that's true. So like, it's not, it's not worth it to do mo like a non momentous, like two damage when you could just do a momentous, like dodge or something like that. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Moving along. Okay. Here, this, these aren't the best bases I've ever stamped, but that's okay. They're going to be all right. I'm just c comforting myself. They're going to be okay. I'm just going to... But yeah, you can already tell, like, that's not... That's usually not the quality that I stamp bases with. But let's just see 
Let's just see how it goes. <clears throat> and then I got to pick this, what style of stamp I'm going to go with. I think I know what I'm going to do. But we'll, we'll have to see. Wow, that's a big old piece of... It's a big old piece of putty. So what type of putty do you use? You don't use green stuff, right? It, this is very similar to green stuff. This is epoxy sculpt. It is mm. it's two part epoxy putty. Um, but it's you know, I buy it in a larger jar and it's cheaper than just buying green stuff. Oh yeah, I bet. Like you could use you could also do milliput. Or any of any of those two part of sculpting epoxies are good for this. Okay. All right. So you you assembled all the hunters. Yep. And you are just painting hunters. Yeah. Oh, I ordered all my fish today, too. Nice. As soon as I got home, I was like, well, time to get some fish. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And I failed my willpower check and bought Alchemist for the fourth time. So if you're <laughs> watching the feed and you realize, hey, I have like four, three or four videos already called Painting Alchemists or Building Alchemists or something like that. That's because that's how many times I've been through this team. Um, well, I kind of crowded you out at the store. I was like, mm, if you don't buy them, I'll buy them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I could go with like a honeycomb cobblestone pattern, which is kind of cool. This plate is cool, but I did that last time. I also I did like a random pattern. I'm really starting to like this kind of scalloped pattern. That's kind of a cool pattern. I think I'm going to go with that. I think that's going to be a pattern. We'll just hope for the best. All right. So I made a joke today at work about watching paint dry. Uh -huh. I'm actually doing that now. So, I mean, <laughs> it yeah. came full circle. <laughs> well, you know, I get paid to do that. It's my, <laughs> it's my day job. That is true. That is true. So now, spray a little water on there. You can. So somebody barred my stamp, and they didn't do this. And you can see what it does to the stamp. It ruins the stamp. Oh. Please don't do that. Always put water on your stamp. Yeah. Okay. That sucks. So I'm gonna have to go a little more gentle than I normally do when I'm doing this because of the. Uh, because of the plastic putty. See if that, yeah, see that didn't even, that wasn't good. It's like a giant, hold on, I'm gonna have to fix this real quick. So I'm gonna have to like kind of rub out the former pattern. Yeah, this one's gonna look weird. That's okay. This one can have the ball, I guess. But I, I'm afraid to put too much pressure on it because it's going to burst this bottom part and it's going to leave a weird crease. Eh, that's okay. It's good enough. They're, they're not going to look the best, but that's what... That's what we're dealing with. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. So now I'm just kind of going for trying to get the full pattern on there. Yeah, these are a little, these are going to end up being a little wonky because the uh, plastic putty did not dry. Oh, mercy. So that's okay. I'll just hold the end. Make sure. There we go. That one actually looked okay. <clears throat> also, the 
stamp itself isn't terribly even. Like this is kind of a, it's weird. It kind of got a wonky stamp. Oh, because uh, it got dried on or something like that? Some more putty got in the creases? Mm. When someone borrowed it? That's Well, I guess so. Oh, I really jacked that one up. That's okay. It still looks okay. Good thing I kind of picked this weird pattern. Because we can make it, it'll look good once it's painted. Just kind of wonky right now. All right, and I got this big old mammoth jammer. Ooh, that one looks terrible. Yeah, it's got like no de definition back there. Let's do this. Just put a, we'll just like put a, our own little pattern in it. That's better. And finally, these weird ones are nice because you could just, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you just throw it down and it's perfect because it has <laughs> no, it has no worry to it. Okay. So there's that. That's going to take the longest to dry. That's why I do it first. So I stamp everything first, and it'll be drying while I'm building. So now we build the miniatures. And I'm going to pin the shit out of everything, as they like to say. So we're going to get some wire. I need probably that many worth of pins. Yeah, Guild Ball, I noticed today while I was building, they've got some very um, weak, <coughs> not weak as in, like, not good looking, but just structural integrity-wise weak. Well, it's yeah. like you're, you're gluing an arm that's, like, super, super tiny to, like, a place that's super, super tiny. And, like, yeah, it's either you pin or you just slather the glue on. Uh-oh. That these went somewhere that I will never find. These didn't turn out too bad. Just pretty standard, you know. Cool. It's a trap with static grass on it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too crazy, but I whipped three of them out in like five minutes. So, I mean, I guess that's pretty good. That works. Yeah. So, I'm going to start cutting all the pins now. So, I have to do this. This is music wire. If, oh, if I don't... Uh, I'm already bleeding because I poked myself with it. Uh, if I don't uh, cover it while I'm cutting it, it'll fire directly into my skin, and that's fun. So that's not a good thing. But this is by far the best stuff I've ever used for pinning. And you can buy a big old spool of it. Where did that pin go? That one, sometimes they just fire off and they're gone. You never see them again. That one's gone. Uh, Fahad is the mascot for the hunters right right who's the guy with the big trap this one got his name that's Hearn. Hearn has the big trap i thought um it's the guy with like two swords two daggers oh oh yeah you're right sorry j car j car i was like i was wondering i was blanking on his name for a hot second yeah that guy's tight i really like uh just everything about him More pins. Yeah, it's a cool model. And he's pretty good in game, too. Oh, man. That's too big. I 
This is how many pins you need to put together six models. Uh, true that. <sighs> did it stay or did it fly through and go into the netherworld? I don't know. I didn't hear it like go anywhere. Should also probably be wearing goggles for this. Oh. <laughs> This is pretty. It's pretty rough. Is that don't try this at home, kids? Yeah. Tag no, without goggles. I should be getting close to the number I need. Let's do one more. Because. Flask is the guy that requires the most pins, and his, he's ridiculous. <clears throat> okay, I think we're good. All right, that's good. Okay, so now let's work on, so I always work on the most difficult models to pin first, and then work my way back to the easiest. That way, I'm not all like freaked out at the end of this process. The other thing is, too, is I typically, uh, with two-handed holds like this, I will typically um, only pin one arm and then just fit the other one in. All right, so now I need to get my pin vise. So I'm going to do that. And... Pin that guy. I used to not pin flask because he really you could just you could if someone you could make the argument to me that you don't need to pin this model because it's pretty stable once you get it together. But I'm a bastard that pins everything. So that's how I roll. All right. Yo, you gotta play it pinned, bro. You gotta play it painted, dude. Okay, so now let's get a file. Let's give myself a little flat spot on the arm. And wow. Ooh. If I get too frustrated, I won't pin. I'm just going to skip this arm. Uh, Flask is their mascot, right? Yep. He's like one of the only mascots that isn't an animal. He's a robot, correct? Or a mecha? He's a robot. robot. Yep. Noise. Robot. Yeah. It basically only matters for Harrow, who has... Charmed animal. Hello. Hello. Hello, let me show the shade. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There's really no room to work there. Okay. So now I need the shortest pin to do this, which is going to be that pin. And I need my little gel. Hi, Raw. So I noticed Octave after playing Cody, uh, I think for the second or third time, what the weakness to farmers is. Yeah? Yeah, uh, don't let Grange die. It's pretty important. Yeah. When I, um, when I played against... Uh, Mark's farmers. I took him down pretty early, and it was not a good game for the farmers. Yeah, he oh. is the boss, and he needs to be alive for his crew to do well. Do I even have a, a good enough hold here for this? Yeah, it looks pretty good. 
Yeah. Nobody in their right mind pins that. Oh, well. Okay. So now... Uh, I've got this backpack here. Again, probably don't need to pin this. But we're going to. So I'm going to file that flat. I'm going to run my drill this way. Ooh. These pieces are just so small on flask. Like, how are they going to go plastic with this? Or are they just not going to? I think, aren't they just going to make it one piece? They yeah. Plastic? They're going to be pre-built pre plastics. But how do you do a piece like flask? Uh, hmm. With uh, got... much prayer and meditation. <laughs> He's got a lot of a uh, three-dimensional thing to him. Okay. That was not very deep. We're going to keep going. All right. And... These pins are a little big. It's okay. So there we go. There's another pin. Now I need to pin the robot legs in. <coughs> so again. Filing down a couple of flat spots. We can get pins. Ooh. I notice this bit is starting to dull out. So it should be snapping here at any time. Ooh. Question is, am I going to bleed? <laughs> and it does. For those of you who like... The episodes where I bleed, this will be a good one. It's not going to be like the classic Wonder Woman episode I filmed once where I bled. I poked myself six different times and broke eight of these. Woo, that's not bits. good. Yeah, that Wonder Woman model was a little too, um, I don't know. It was like, it was almost like the... The metal that they cast for her was just way too firm. Mm. Like, I couldn't even get the drills to bite. So far, so good here. Those look good. Okay. Well, there's that, there's that. Ain't nothing like a little Elmer's glue to... Get the basing started. Mm -hmm. And let's just get all the. So then there's a hole here for the arm. Grab my little sandbox right here. I just... So you're going to be. So this uh, Hunter's team you're going to be working on. Pretty much all weekend? Yes. Nice. Are you going to try to get in a game with them this weekend, too? I or hope no? so. Someone's free. So maybe like Sunday, Sunday late in the day in the afternoon or something? Yeah. I mean, they should be done. I mean, it depends how late I stay up tonight. But like maybe even Saturday night. This should be done, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Nice. All right. So now we got all those in. So now we're going to put two pins here, one on either side of the robot's hips. It's a lot of damn pins. One, two, three, four, 
five pins for a little tiny little mascot like this. Who the hell needs to do that? Yeah, by far, this one model has more pins than all of the other Alchemist players. I'm wondering if I should just, no. I was thinking about maybe just drilling all the way through this so that It'll be super strong. It'll look a little weird. But yeah, it would be strong. It would be really strong if I decide to do that. Let me... I'm going to put a pin here. At the bottom of the track. It can be pinned to the base. So there's that. So I'm going to have to actually trim back a lot of these pins. They're just really long. Mm -hmm. Maybe I did too good of a trap job on this one because now I can't really see it. <laughs> nice. See, it's uh, pretty in there. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, gonna to, I'm gonna have to figure something out about that. I'll probably just put some wash on it and then you know liquid talent it out. Nice. Good old liquid talent. Oh gosh. Yeah. Some of these bases could have been better. <clears throat> That's okay. It's okay. Alright. So now when we start to glue, we're gonna we always go with the the best joints, the ones that fit the body most closely, and work our way out. So I'm going to clip that. And so if you're just joining us, welcome to Play It Painted Live. Let us know what you're painting and what you should be painting. Me and Andrew are both working on Guild Ball stuff. Boy, how is that? Oh, come on. I think Liquid Talent's coming through, man. I could actually see the trap now. <laughs> Liquid Talent's rad. All right. So the backpack is the easiest one to, the easiest of these limbs to deal with. I'm going to cut the pins on the hips here really short because they're real. It's a really shallow channel there. <clears throat> Oops, I might have went too short on that side. Okay, and... Yeah, liquid talent came through. I could actually <laughs> see it now. See? Oh, cool. It defined it. Yeah, because I wanted it to look like really, really hidden, like an actual trap, you know, like in real life. But mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to be, uh, you know, unseen. <laughs> you didn't want it to be too real life. Yeah, I wanted a little bit of Michael Bay in there, you know. <laughs> Ooh, which model should I... Okay, now that I got the traps out of the way, I'm wondering which model I should tackle first. Yeah. I tend to go from my least favorite to my favorite. Oh, hmm. well then. That's just my like mentality is if I like, oh, I don't like this sculpt. As long as I can make it through this sculpt, I'll get to a better model, one that I like that's going to be more fun to paint. 
and so on and so forth. I guess that'd be Minx for me. I don't really like Minx. Yeah. And she has she's on a tiptoe and she has her her arms and the little the little fur thing that's coming off her um like coming yeah. off her headdress. Wasn't too thrilled to paint that. Okay. All right, so a little glue there. Woo. Little Johnny Five action going on here. Hey, what's up, Jam Jar Thirty Four? How long you been on? Uh, I don't know. We've been on what, maybe thirty minutes or so. Yeah, sounds about right. Welcome to the feed, sir. Dang, I just decimated my supply of pins doing the stupid mascot. Actually. Oh boy. Right? That's that tiny little guy's got five pins in him. All right, next up, let's actually work on uh yeah, I guess vitriol. These are mostly three pins a piece. I'm gonna be short, I'm gonna cut some more pins. Let's do that real quick. <clears throat> what mini are you both doing? I'm doing Minx from the Union Guild Ball faction. Mm -hmm. And Octave, you are doing Vitriol, that you said? I am building the Alchemist uh, starter set. Nice. <laughs> it's funny, we both met at Comet Quest and we're just like, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for the same thing. Fancy meeting you here. Yeah, and I had a really good, uh, good game with Cody. Oh yeah, so I was, was kind of amped off of that. Ooh, nice. So I was like, eh, I'll stop by Comic Quest. I was actually looking for something for Batman when I got there and didn't even realize that they had the six-player sets there. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't even know they... To be honest, I thought they had, like, three blisters and, like, the dice. So I was not expecting much, but they had a pretty decent selection. Yeah. They had, like, the tokens, the dice, the sets, like, the old sets as well. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, they, I was, I think they know that's getting big in our area, so. Well, yeah, it, Guild Ball had ex kind of exploded a little bit, maybe a year, year and a half ago. And at that time, uh, Comic Quest, um, they got... A bunch of stuff for the game and so now they still and they they were been able to maintain it we haven't had um the biggest community at cq but you know we were still uh between mark myself a, a couple other people we were still playing and we were still you know kind of keeping appearances with the game i would say all in all, about maybe about a dozen or more people at CQ at one point or another were playing Guild Ball, like before you came on. Oh, wow. But, you know, people moved. Some people, there was a whole slew of people that actually kind of got out of the game. Um, and then, uh, and me and Mark basically stayed. There's still, like, there, you'll still run into people there at CQ that have their teams, and so if you're like, "Oh, I play Guild Ball," they might go, "Oh, I have a, um, I have a Hunter's team, or I have a Mortician's team, or something." Nice. I think we can get the community back alive here because it's 
already like people who play pretty often are you, me, Cody, Kevin, Mark. Uh, yeah, Mark. Matt, Mark, yes. Yeah. And then Matt, right? Yep. As well, farmers. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, like that right there is already tournament size. So I mean, us alone would be enough to just start be running like events and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, there's also some other people like me and Kevin were playing on Tuesday, <coughs> and this guy came up and he was like, "You're playing Guild Ball?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Dude, I want to play that too." And I was like, "Get, get, get in it, man!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like the community knows about it, they just don't know if the community, you know, like backs it. So yeah, there's it. it that's miniature gaming. Everybody, nobody wants to be first in the pool. Everybody wants to be fourteenth in the pool. Yeah, because they don't want to show up to the tournament. And it's like, oh, nobody's here. Look at that. They don't want to buy into a game and spend all this time and money building and collecting a team or an army or whatever and then come to find out nobody plays it. Yeah. But I do that all the time, so I don't know what everybody's so worried about. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, no one plays it. I just don't care. I'm going to – usually, though, I mean, like, for me, I'll do that mainly because – or one of the main reasons is because I like painting the stuff anyway. So it's really not a big loss. Like, there have been probably three or four game systems that I bought into that ended up being, you know, dead ends. No one played them. But, you know, I had – I always paint, like, one or two starter sets, so – it's never a loss. I can just turn around and put on eBay. Yeah. It's not a big deal. I went a little too far pinning Vitriol's foot there because she's on a tiptoe. Guild Ball has gone down a bit after GW brought out Blood Bowl. What's your opinion? Well, yeah, a lot of um, locally when Blood Bowl was re-released by GW, there was a crazy amount of hype around it, um, and Guild Ball kind of waned locally while that happened, and people were buying Blood Bowl teams uh, and starting leagues and all this other stuff. But that scene, at least out here, that scene, like, burned faster and harder than the guild ball scene did like there they might have had you know two dozen players at the onset uh, but then three four weeks later they're down to like five players and at our lgs um blood bowl never really took off which is weird because um before gw re-released it i was playing it quite a bit like i've been I've been playing Blood Bowl for uh, over 10, 15 years. Like, I still love Blood Bowl, but um, I right now I have no interest in playing it. And I still have my, my slam team, and that's part of the reason why, is because GW came back in, and they're like, no, there's no slam. And so, you know, they might come back with them. I doubt it. But, you know, guys like me that were, that played – um, Blood Bowl in like the more rebellious spirit of oh well this is a dead game but it it's totally revived by the players like that's what I loved about Blood Bowl it was that the players stepped in they started making their own miniatures they started um, designing their own rules uh, and they came up with they came out with a uh, uh, we'll call it a, like an international um, organized play format. Uh, so many things happen with Blood Bowl after GW dropped it that, you know, it was part of the allure of playing Blood Bowl was, oh, I'm playing this game as sort of a middle finger to GW for abandoning such a good game. Um, and then when it came back, everybody kind of came back and wanted to do their official models and all that stuff, but it just didn't last out here. People were like, well, okay, it's at the end of the day, it's still GW. So the people that are deep in GW and play all their stuff probably still play Blood Bowl. But 
GW has them playing like Necromunda and 40k right now. <coughs> so they're yeah. not playing Blood Bowl either. The 40k community is like getting pretty big around here. Yeah. So But you know, 40k has always kind of been a mainstay. Like it it Oh yeah, the big cash cow. Yeah, it, it's just always people are always going to be playing 40k. Not I I personally will never understand why but <laughs> that's just me i get it I, you know i'm over that particular system but a lot of other people really like it it's all good uh let's see I just forget how she does this little swan pose it's kind of like that right but as far as guild ball is concerned Guild Ball has always been the smaller presence, but it's a more, uh, what's the word? Locally, I would say it's probably, I don't know, it's a little more dedicated presence, I should say. Yeah, I agree with Amongst that. Amongst the few people that do play it. It's like we stopped, I stopped playing Guild Ball for a few months, but I always had it on me. Because I always, you know, if somebody wanted to play Guild Ball, we stopped to play. Uh, we we went back and played some second edition Malifaux. We were playing Relic Knights, obviously. Uh, we started to pick up Batman again. Batman's still awesome. Still awesome. The second edition Batman came out today. That was that was so good. Oh, they switched to the inches, right? Yep, they switched to the inches. It really isn't much of a change. I mean, they did. Most of the changes they did for Batman were really, really good changes, and they were they were fairly small, subtle changes. Nice. All right, so vitriol is done. Yeah. Now we move on to Midas here. I am not a fan of Minx, man. I don't like this model, <laughs> but she's so good. <laughs> I'll, I will one day. I will. Uh, I will play Blood Bowl again one day. Actually, I can't say that. I don't know. I mean, in order to really, in order for Blood Bowl to really thrive, you have to be playing in a league. You can't. That's that is one of the one of the um, advantages for Guild Ball is that it is a great one-off game, and it is great for single day events and single day tournaments because there's no progression. Um, the downside to guild ball is there's no progression. So if you, you know, and it gives the two games very distinct identities. Like if you want to play, if you want to play in the league, you want to play, you know, with basic players that you skill up and you, you build your team. Blood bowl is absolutely the game you need to be playing. If you want to play, you know, if you don't have time to commit to a league, uh, and you want to play a good, clean, competitive game for relatively cheap, then Guild Ball is your game. Yeah, man, the union starter on Amazon's 15 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, let's be real, man. How, and what, I, what? I will also say that Guild Ball is possibly the only miniatures game that I have ever heard of in my 20, what is it, like 27 years of gaming now. Jeebus. Um, that has ever gotten cheaper after it got more popular. So weirdest, it's like, oh, our game is popular now. You know what we're going to do? We're going to make our starting sets cheaper. <laughs> like, that doesn't happen. You know, DW was like, oh, we're, we're going to go resin. It's going to be cheaper. But they charged more. So they didn't tell you that the, it, it was going to be cheaper for them to make. <laughs> they didn't, they were like, it's going to be cheaper. And, you know, the customer is like, oh, great. Well, not for you. <laughs> it be cheaper for me. The guy making these. It's like, I hope you didn't get the memo. I'm like, Just what, letting you know. Yeah. Well, what were you thinking? You think, you think I was going to make it cheaper for you? Why should I make it cheaper for you? <laughs> yeah, I'm Pimp Daddy GW, bro. You work for me. <laughs> it's not your money. It's my money. <laughs> they, went, they went to resin for Finecast. 
that oh, ended up God. being a lot more expensive than My they went to hard shit, plastic. Though. You know, by comparison, weird miniatures, they went from metal to hard plastic. And they're, they were pretty much price neutral. In some cases, like for their, their starter sets were better value. Uh, but they didn't really, they didn't technically go down in price. Like Guild Ball absolutely went down in price when they were like, oh, people like our game. Okay, let's make it cheaper. That's just crazy to me. Like, well, who does that? Yeah, I think you can get a pretty good union team on Amazon. Like, I was, and guys, support your local game store. But I'm just saying, like, if you pull, <laughs> like, you know, I, I understand if you got to hit up to Amazon sometimes. Like, but uh, literally, and even if you're not poor, you got to save a dollar here and there. But, mm -hmm. like, the Union starter set, you get three models. You get the captain and two other people who are, like, pretty damn good, right, for 15 bucks. And then you get – you could choose literally one of the two mascots. Both are under $10 on Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking at about, like, what, $24, right? So and far, yeah. You need, what, two more players of your choice, right? So if you want to go Avarice and Greed, yeah, it's 30 bucks. But, I mean, like, dude, it's Avarice and Greed. Greed. Right, mm -hmm. they're like one of the best union models you can get, or you can go like with um, well, Minx, or you can go Mist, or you can go uh, he Hemlock, right? Yeah, the girl with the smelling salts. Like you got options. That's the thing. Is like, and you could make a really, really kick-ass team for probably fifty bucks of your That's choice. True. It's you choosing what you want. It's not oh, I bought Star Sales fifty bucks. It's no, right. I. I chose what mascot I wanted. I chose like two of the models in the kit, mm -hmm. like in my team for 50 bucks, which is like, dude, let's be real. That's pretty damn good for any game that you're doing. Yep. I mean, for example, right? Like this six player alchemist starter. Um, if I were to buy it at the original retail price uh, by buying the three man starter, uh, which at retail, I believe, was like $35, $36, right? And then three other models. So $35, $36, I think, I believe Flask was like $15. Vitriol was $15. That's, so that's $65. And then you had, I think, uh, Catalyst puts you at about $85, Oof. right? So they, so they literally took the same models and they put them together and made it 10 bucks cheaper. That's what I mean. Like nobody does that. No, I can't name a single miniatures company that ever did anything like that. Yeah, it's only ten bucks cheaper, but it's ten bucks cheaper at the LGS compared to retail. Now, if you like Andrew was saying, if you went to Amazon and did the same thing, now you're talking, you know, it's twenty, thirty, or more cheaper than the than the, the retail base cost. Because you can get, like, this this Alchemist set, again, by local, but if you can't, <laughs> this set is, like, 40, 44, 45 bucks, plus shipping, and we'll call it 50 even. Like, that's stupidly cheap. $50 for these exact models, not, you know, you're not getting um, single sculpt plastic. You're getting these exact models. Yep. So, bottom line, it's good. It's a good thing. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of uh, kind of like Relic Knights, how it's just really, really easy to get into a, a brand new faction, a brand new feel. Mm -hmm. for like super cheap. Like, say you want, like War Machine. War Machine is like one of my loves, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's that, it's that, it's that the one that I couldn't get away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, the thing is, I've been playing basically since like Mark II just came out and it had the same feel that Guild Ball had. It's like, oh yeah, you just buy a new caster and you got like what, two war jacks and like a unit and you good, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's like, nah, man, you got to get the battle engine. You got to get the the big boy, the, like the storm wall. You got to get the Colossus. So that's what they're called. Uh, you got to get like, you have to have like five jacks in army now and like two units and it's like, well, if I want to play, I don't know, Circle of Obros because I like werewolves, it's going to cost me about like 200 bucks to do. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, like, Guild Ball, as far as flavor-wise, bang for buck, oh, man, it's the best. Yeah. And if you're, like, all about that one team, you can travel with a Guild Ball team, like, almost in your pocket because it's so small. Like, if you, oh, yeah. if you play your six-man team or, you know, I really like the, the kickoff little box that holds both teams in it. Like, yeah, I that thing's awesome. That. Uh, let's see. Do you think they will do Epic again? Um, yes, I do. I do think I do think GW will bring Epic back if they see uh, games like Drop Zone Commander starting to take off, or you know, the old Spartan games. Well, Spartan games are dead now, but um, if they saw if they saw Flames of War, if they see that scale starting to get popular, then they would bring Epic back. Um, what they're more likely going to do, though, is they're going to probably try to do something safer than bring the whole system back. They probably try to do like a one-off uh, board game box or something to kind of see. They're, they would want to gauge what the interest is in Epic. And, yeah, Dreadfleet. <laughs> yeah. Dreadfleet, <laughs> instead of... Uh, uh, what's it called? <coughs> I forget the name of that. Uh, I forget the name of the the system that that used to exist. Uh, okay, looking pretty good so far. What was the one? That, it was not Dreadfleet. It was before Dreadfleet. What was, it was called? Uh, Manowar. That's right, Manowar. All right. Uh oh. Okay, calculus is actually my favorite miniature in the whole in this whole set. Love calculus. What does uh, that model do? What does she do? Yes. Yeah. Uh, mostly she throws AOE poison cloud. Um, m although. I tend to play her more throwing blind around. Oh, yeah. The blind yeah, is super good. The slow, right? The movement speed. Blind jacks you up. Like, blind is like minus two, minus two move, minus and one defense. Attack. Yeah, it, it jacks you up pretty bad. Like, if she can get blind off on the right target, you know... A couple of times in the game she can win like she's like super valuable just for that but the poison cloud is also quite nice too because yeah. that's your dot damage and you know and you have an aoe to kind of control the board she's just a great control piece that's why i really wanted tentacle because his minus four four move i think is what it is or minus two two move i can't remember Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's so good when you're playing fish. Yeah. Because they just can't catch you. Mm hmm Now, the cool thing with, uh, with Calculus is you can take two of her. Wow. Uh, you know, <laughs> if, you take, if you take Calculus and you take um, uh, Hemlock, you essentially have two of the same model. Oh, does he copy spells? His, well, because Hemlock has, she also has blind. She also has um, the poison. Oh, color. smelling salt lady. Yes, yeah, so I was thinking the yeah. engineer model that copies spells. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. I was thinking of a whole different faction, man. My bad. It's okay. But yeah, like if you're going to play the AoE game, the smoke game, you could feel her. You could field Hemlock, you could field uh, Crucible, and uh, and Mercury. And you're going to have just AoE dots for days. You'll probably be bad at everything else you do. But if you really wanted to play that way, which I don't recommend, because it's a super limiting play style, but you could do it, is what I'm saying. Yeah, if you're playing against my farmers, though, that would... Give me a bad time because I love to bunch up. 
yeah, farmers, even uh, masons, brewers, you know, and masons, brewers, and farmers aren't rocking the best defense. No, not at all. So you could proc a lot of stuff off of them. A lot of health, though, on them farmers. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, they have no armor. Like, we have our highest defense is on our Scarecrow, which is kind of funny because mm -hmm. he's, he's a Scarecrow. Yeah. You know? So it's like we most of our defense is average defense three. So it's like, dude, you get a snare on us or knock us down. Oh, boy. It's just a field day. But we have, like, 30 health. So, I mean, that kind of kind of evens it out. Like, our lowest – like, Tater has, I think, the least health out of, like, all the humans in the group. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting at 16. Yeah, that's a lot of boxes. 16 health is awesome on most other teams. They're like, oh, my God, 16 health. That's great. Yeah, so farmers, man, they hardy. They hardy? Me hardy? Oh, dude, I'm so tempted to play Union after you said that that guy was a pirate. <laughs> but I'm like, I got fish, and Corsair is a pirate. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll settle for that. I, I bought Corsair and Shark. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to run out of pinning stuff again. Okay. I'm going waifu is laifu with Minx right now. I'm giving her a pink, uh, instead of a bear pelt, it's a pink uh, parka. <laughs> So, uh, oh no, it's purple. My bad. Wow. Uh, I gotta clean up some crusty. What do I do with my my hobby knife again with the hobby knife? Um, there it is. You got like crusty in the arm here. Yeah, so I also like playing Union, but I have, like, the worst record with my Union teams. I do not win very often with that team. Is it just hard for you, like, to score VP, or, <coughs> like, what, what are you thinking is the, the main difficulty? Um, I think it's because they're all so good. They're good individually. And so I put together these teams that don't make a lot of sense. And they do, you know, they, they start doing their thing and they do a decent job of it. But then, you know, late game, I really start to struggle because I don't have, like, I, I didn't have a, a really good way to close out games. Oh, no synergy. Yeah. So, for example, today um, it was um, – I was playing a black heart list. So black heart uh, gutter decimate. So the old, the original starter, Avarice and Greed. Uh, and who was my other player? M and Mist. What right? about uh, mascot? Uh, coin. Coin, okay. So I was playing really like old school OG list, right? And so, and I, I was like, oh, I covered all my bases. I have, uh, you know, I've got. Hit, I've got Everson and Greed, who's just good at a lot of different things. I also had uh, uh, Gutter in there for Gutter and Decimate, which are really they're really good hitters. Um, and I had Mist, who was my dedicated scorer. So I had good stuff there, um, but the I would have to say the main one of the main setbacks I faced was I had Mist out there. And I just don't do well with pure striker players. They just, I don't, they don't make sense to me. I, I want to, especially with a group like that, I want to, uh, you know, and I took uh, the most wanted identity card so that I was getting extra VP for takedowns. So I managed to get three takedowns. Uh, so I took Theron down, I took Hearn down, and I took, uh, Chaska down, right? Mm, okay. So that's 9 VP. So I'm like, man, all I really need to do is get another takedown 
or score a goal. But by that point in the game, Mist was never in good position to score. And uh, and all my other guys, because the uh, recovery rate, the, the, the uh, yeah, the recovery rate cost takes goes all the way down to two. So I'm only recovering two health. Ooh, that's, that's not good. Um, you know, and Cody's like, he's like doing anywhere from two to four damage on ranged plays. Plus he's got two free charges with the bear and minx. He's got, a, he could just, he can really put out the burst damage. Um, so I was having, an issue closing out because I because missed I I don't know how to play him in all honesty I don't understand what what you really are supposed to do with that guy. Yeah, doesn't he have like just weird like if he's in a cloud or something he's faster. And... Yeah, like he's got really good threat range, but <laughs> he's in my opinion he's just not nearly as good as Flint. Flint for whatever reason, has a much easier time getting across the board. He's better at controlling the ball, and he's actually, and he's objectively a better kicker. So yeah, if I'm going like, to take a pure scorer, I want to take a Flint or uh, or even like a seasoned brisket. Um, but those are the best scorers in the game, yeah. like the entire game. So, I mean... Well, so Mist is also supposed to be one of the best scorers in the entire game. But any I'm sure he is. I'm just terrible with him. <laughs> I haven't looked at his card too much. Like I've glanced at it. Um yeah, his he's fast. I think that's what he's got going for him is he's just super he's fast. Fast. He's got the cover and the AoE blocking. He's got yeah, two inch reach with his whole playbook is full of momentous dodges and push dodges, and he's got, you know, nice 3-8 kick. Um, so he's pretty good. Oh, hey, what's up, Greenleaf? Welcome to the feed. Yeah, I mean, by all accounts, he's a really, really good striker. I just suck with him. Like, I don't. Uh, you know what I'd try next game, Octave? Is uh, Were you using the smoke clouds to block LOS so they can't charge you? No, not really, no. Because I, I feel like that's what his main staple is, is he can tackle someone, get a good dodge off, and then hide in a smoke cloud so that you can't see him. And then not only that, but he's in cover because of the smoke cloud. So that means that they're hitting you. If they just decide to run towards you instead of charging you, yeah, yeah they're really having a bad time trying to hit him. Sure. And he's, he's like defense, what, four, right? Or five? Defense five. Yeah, so like he's pretty hard to hit, and you could do a uh, defensive stance or like a counter attack and just double dodge again, right? You know, out of their range, and it's like, well, now you're stuck in a smoke cloud, buddy. Like, have fun. I think it's it's how I kind of play Masons, where I need the models to be able to to at least do some hitting and have some usefulness down at the low end of their playbook. Um, and so I think that's a big part of it too. I don't know. I think from, for my comfort zone with union, I would have, I should have, uh, well, I could have run any number of models instead of mist. Like for example, I do better with snakeskin than with mist, which is weird. Mm. Like the whole internet thinks snakeskin is pretty bad. I think snakeskin's pretty And I'm like, cool. snakeskin is freaking awesome. I don't know what these people are talking about. I think snakeskin's pretty tight. Like, she is a perennial scorer for me. She pretty much always does a really good job. Um, but yeah, I, I like a model like snakeskin better because she is a really good scorer but she there's a number of other things she does too like i need she can she can put poison out there she's got her defenses are way better than mists 
Like she's probably she's you know without being a big dude with a lot of boxes, she is one of the more difficult models to kill. Yes, yeah, so she's <laughs> charmed male, right? Charmed male defense four, no armor, but charmed male. Then you and you've got uh, what's it called? You can go up plus one defense to go to defense uh, six against males, and then. You can also uh, you can also clone. Oh yeah, you're right. So she's pretty ridiculous. And then she and I love that she's got shadow like. Okay, so I found my pink. I I, I decided to go with pink instead of purple for. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm going full and I'm, I'm going back to relic knights, man. This is throwback. The man. callback to relic knights. Tell me. Oh, sorry. My, I was just gonna be. There's no mistaking this mix from anyone else's on the internet. Nice. Where are? I'm telling you. I oh, it fell on the floor. Oops. All right, well, that's not coming back. Okay. One, two, I need one more pin. Actually, let me just cut this pin in half, and that should do it. Ooh. Ooh, you good, man? Ooh. Yeah, that, I felt that fire into my skin. Ooh, those are always fun. There it is, too. Nice. Okay. Get them. So one player left and the ball. So, so the big dude. Actually, I need a bigger pin to take care of this guy. Hold on. Still going to have to cut a pin. Oh man, did that. There we go. Okay. I don't even know anymore. All right. So this is the easiest guy to deal with. Mr. Catalyst. But he does have a big old honking foot here. Do a little Heisman Trophy action. Where did it go? Okay. So one pin here in his heel. But yeah, like even with how awesome Flint is, I don't even run him in my Masons half the time. I'd rather have Tower. Like Tower does more things. He gives tooled up, so I can. He just gives me a more flexible roster than Flint does. So a lot of people on the internet are freaking out now because I said that. <gasps> you don't play the game like I do. <gasps> you don't, no, you don't play, you don't play Flint. <laughs> Uh, it's like, I, used to be, I used to be that like I used to be a super Flint fanboy like everybody has to play Flint he's the best model in the whole game right and he's still great don't get me wrong still awesome model but I like to play a more balanced attack now with Masons and plus like when during Flint's heyday when I was getting like two and three goals a game with him, people just started to get sick of it, and they would just 
go after him round one. Like, they didn't even care. They wouldn't even go after the ball. They're like, we're just going to kill this idiot, and then we'll worry about trying to win the game after. And sometimes it worked. Sometimes it's like, well, we'll just kill Flint. He won't have a way to score. And I had built my whole mentality around getting Flint the ball and getting him, you know, in position to score. And I was super good at that. Then once that option was taken away from me, then I wasn't very good with the rest of my team. So it became kind of like a crutch model for you? Totally, yeah. Mm. Yeah, Flint is very good, and he's very handsome. Like you know, He's a very good-looking man. He is a good-looking dude. <laughs> like, damn. I'm joking. I'm joking, guys. I hope they understand that. Flint and Tater are the... Uh... Dude, Tater's such a spud, dude. He's so good-looking. They're the handsome ones. Come. But the real unspoken MVP out in the world is Harrow. Dude, he makes all the animals swoon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Harrow. Harrow. What? Oh, okay. Now I kind of like Minx. She's got like a Bionicles mask going on. Like, <laughs> I just noticed that. <laughs> I'm getting some nostalgia bomb, man. All right. You don't even need to really pin this, but again, I just pin stuff. And then stuff falls off my desk. Was it I some models or something? I don't know. I don't think so. I'll find out later, I guess. Hmm. I think this model's not going to turn out too great, but you know, I'm rusty, so I'll blame it on the rest. What? Okay. There we go. So he, oh, no, that just popped right out. Good job. Why did that just pop right out? Let's put a little more glue in the gap here. Okay. So the final thing to deal with is the guild ball itself. Which is my favorite thing about getting new teams, is you always get a brand new guild ball. It's always, it's always fun. That is like true. That. I don't know. I might do a, I might do a green guild ball. I'm trying to figure out what my color scheme is going to be for these guys anyway. I really do like this kind of, oops, like this kind of like really bright blue green. Nice. But I don't know what the second main color is. It's going to be black or brown or another, even another green or even a blue that I don't know. All right. But I'll figure it out when I get there. When I get to that part. Mm, I think it's time for Liquid Talent, and we'll see how she turns out. But nice. not, <coughs> not that great, if I'm honest. But you know, gotta, gotta love that pink parka, bro. Let's be real. <laughs> 
Is that what they call them? Parkas? I don't know. Sweatshirt, t-shirt, hoodie. Ugh. Okay. So I can even do that number like that. Yeah, like, hmm. See that like weird dent there in the base? Hmm. Oh, wow. It's so wet. I don't even have to... I didn't even have to drill through it. I could just poke that hole all the way through. Blessings in disguise, Whoa. man. So I hope it looks okay when it's painted. It looks weird right now. Let's put a little glue there on the tracks. All right, let's see if liquid talent fixes all my, my problems. <laughs> Octave, is that, did anyone ask anything in the chat? No, nope, the last comment is, sup, buddy. What's, What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? There you go. Like this. So I'm trying to line these. I'm just going to take the two worst ones right now. Stick these guys on it. Liquid talent, do your magic. All right. Yeah, no one will really notice that one. Lol, I comment for you. Thank you, Adam. Good job. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, these are all kind of wonky. Oh, well. Luckily, the alchemists kind of have weird. I could totally do that, and no one would know. No one would know. Look at that. There's just weird dents and lines. I played 40k in Bushido tonight. Bushido, dude, I love the con the idea of getting into Bushido. Such a cool little game. Almost impossible to find out here. Cameron plays Bushido. Oh yeah, he does. And he's been trying to get me to try it for like years now. And I really, really should. I am not a fan of the way this model turned out, but I do Thank like you. the pink. Yeah, I'm not a fan, to be honest, but I do like that pink. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's all that counts. That's all that matters, right? Yeah. I knew this was going to be the one that I was like, eh. Now, how can I ruin it? I guess it's just... And possibly make it look better. Where is my... There it is. Got some red ink. Time to, time to add some blood. <laughs> nice. Oh, geez. Look at... I really thrashed this base here. It's really a mess. Yeah, I do like the idea of... Bushido, I, my favorite thing about Bushido is the fact that it's played on like a two by two. That's <laughs> that's what I want to play. I want to play a game, a miniatures game that you can play on a two by two, so that you can just stick it on any like regular two foot two two by four you know card gaming table and just like break out a miniatures game. This is going to be like so, probably. <laughs> yes, it is awesome. I'm making a little point. Yeah. <coughs> the problem I had with Bushido is I could not find the faction stuff that I really liked the look of. And I just sort of couldn't justify interest in it because of the other 
millions of games that I play. <laughs> all right. I don't know how this is all going to work. This is going to be quite interesting. I don't even think these are going to be dry enough for me to prime tonight. We shall see. Which one of these looks terrible enough to throw the ball on? This one. That one looks terrible. Let's put the ball on it. Well, I could also put vitriol on it, and no one would even know that there's a massive problem right there. Look at that. Until we do that. No one would even be the wiser. So for you guys that are listening to me, plot and scheme. Pink, there is a pure ninja faction. Like, come on, bro. You, you do have solid logic there, sir. Okay. Yeah, these are so, everything here is so wet that it's not. Yeah, I do not like this model or the way it turned out, but I will still play it. Yeah, that's the spirit. Because it's painted. Yeah, I don't know. I, I tried to do some tribal stuff on the mask. Didn't really work out too great. It's like, it's a meh model in my mind. It's not really mm -hmm. that good at all. So, I mean, she definitely will look different from the rest of the crew, which will solidify her as a union model. Cool. All right, Guild Ball's in. Last model to go in is going to be... Calculus. See if I can paint up the bear real quick, just because it's like three different types of colors. That is true. Oh, let's go. With, I want to make this a really unique bear. We're going to go with gray. That's the main color. All right, so let that stuff dry for just a second. <coughs> I'm going to take a quick munchy break here. So if you guys are listening to me chew, just recall that you're watching a live stream of a guy eating a cookie. But is it Pepperidge Farm, though? No, it's not Pe Pepperidge Farm. Oh, man, they're going to remember that one, man. <laughs> Pepperidge Farm remembers. Hey, Pepperidge Farm always remembers. Yeah, I think, I think I'd like a gray bear. This sounds like it'd be pretty cool, <laughs> like that sort of that sort of gray type of color. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't want to go like standard brown or black bear, so I was like, hmm, how can I make this different? <laughs> So I'll start fitting them onto these guys so we can try to do a little priming tonight. If I do if I am able to get through the airbrush stuff tonight. There's a reasonable chance I could be done by Sunday. Very nice. Well, crazy Americans. We do what we like, man. There are gray bears somewhere. Yeah, I was like, mm, this there are is old the polar bears. It could be a thing. This is the world of Gilbama, man, where <laughs> a, a frost 
moon queen can create a second guild ball and it's somehow legal. <laughs> so I could have I could have my frosty the snow bear, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who that? Oh, my fingers are properly soiled. Ooh, that sounds terrible. I'm about to order the comp. Oh, I guess my sister doesn't need me anymore. She's like, I need your help ordering a computer. Yeah, not anymore. I guess I'm off the hook. Dude, is that even going to dry? Her like this. It's this not even going to dry, is it? Yeah, this thing might look actually really cool. It's gonna, I think it, I'm going for the polar bear look now. That's that's what we're doing. And this will become my favorite model. Oh, man. I got problems. What? It's just she's on her tiptoe, which is fine oh. because I've got a pin through it. Yeah. The problem is not the not that it's the it's the fact that the epoxy hasn't dried yet so oh, what i'm so going to do is i'm going to do like quick set here and see if it see if i can just get her to temporarily stay upright and it's looking like the answer is no and if the answer is no then my blue. I may have to stick her on a different base and just use a different base. That is true. Now let's see. Let's see if I can get with the quick set. If I can get her to stand. All right. Let's just not touch her and hope she doesn't lean far. Lean back. Don't lean back. All right. Wait, that. I'm really liking this gray octave. Yeah, like that's pretty sweet right there. Like, cause okay. it's not, it's not white. I mean, it looks it up looks white, white on this screen. Yeah, but like IRL, which you will probably see like either this weekend or next week. Perler bear. It's a per. It's a perler bear. Perler bear. Perler bear. But I don't play Frost Queen, so I mean, or well, Moon, whatever. I play the proper hunter. Per Perler bear. All right. See, Mercury, he's he's got it together. He's fine. So now it's going to be the big guy who probably is not going to stay in this position. Well, he looks okay. Let's see what we get. If any of these fall during priming, this is going to be rather catastrophic. No pressure. Ooh. Yeah, that's really bad. Don't die, please. Oh, man. Don't die, catalyst. <clears throat> All right. Put all this stuff away for now. Looking good so far. So good. Then <laughs> clean my primer airbrush. Oh boy, that's not going to work doing that. He's going to have to be someplace where I don't hurt her. Oh. 
Wait, so I just noticed, is Chaska like the only guy with a gun in the game? Um Yes. It's the boom box, man. He's the only guy with a firearm. You have models you have a few models that have like crossbows. But yeah, he's the only one that has a like a proper firearm. Yeah, because I was wondering that. I mean, like engineers, they have ballista, but that's a crossbow. And then mm -hmm. like everyone else in the hunters is either like bow and arrow mm -hmm. or like knife. <laughs> like that's about it. That's that's your range. Yeah, Salvo, who is also crossbow. Uh, the blacksmiths have a new. They have a model who has a crossbow also. Like you think blacksmiths would be the ones to have the guns, right? Like that that just makes sense. Yeah, they have a, well they have one crossbow and a whole bunch of hammers from what I can see. Okay. That's fairly clean. I'm still, oh gosh. Yep. Vitriol is going to be a problem on this base for sure. Maybe I can. <clears throat> See if I can get it to stay. If not. I might be just sweating this too hard. I might just put her on a You know what? Yeah, let's just do it. Ain't nobody got time for this. Let's just put her on a better base. And I can go directly in the trash can for all I care. See? A weird base looks great. And you just drill the hole through it and glue them in, glue her in, and it's like nothing bad ever happened to you in your life. It's like everything was just a bad dream. Nothing bad happened to you. You get to go on with your life. It's just dream. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you upset? Just dream. Or uh, one of my favorites is like, why are you mad? It's only a game. <laughs> That's literally like one of my favorites. Because I, I play a lot of League of Legends and whew, whew, there's a lot of heat. I'm more more so than War, Warhammer. You'd be surprised. I believe it. Whew, some people get spicy on that game, man. And then your Asian relatives be walking by and like, why are you so upset? Why are you upset? This one again. <laughs> yeah, this is going to work out way better. Why you yell? Only pixel on screen. <laughs> so her base is going to look a little weirder than everybody else's, but we don't care. Weirder in that it's like significantly better. Look at that. Bam. Like that. Bam. Just put her on there. It's just like Emerald Legacy. Bam! Like, no issues with that. Dang. That's how important those stupid weird bases are. Like, if you got a weird base, you're good. You can build and paint and continue with your life. You don't have to worry about the stress of economy and 
where America's going. The comedy. Or if we're just going on with our lives as beings on the... I'm just joking, guys. It's like, yeah. Oh. Uh, yes. But the good news is should be able to prime tonight. Catalyst is still a little bit of a question mark. So I'm going to save him for last. Why you save him for last? Why you do that one? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> By the way, I'm like for the people who don't know and they think I'm just being blatantly racist, I'm half Chinese. <laughs> I'm going to cover myself right now <laughs> before someone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This oh, okay. is <laughs> I'm, this. I'm way more offensive on this feed. Than, and I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> it's Probably why I don't have the kind of family viewing numbers that uh, a lot of other channels have because I just don't care. We stream late at night, and if I'm offending people, it happens. <clears throat> Why? My you that? It's only stream. <laughs> Why? Why are you offended? It's only the stream. It's only camera painting tiny metal. This isn't the river. This only stream. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you upset? <laughs> oh man. Ugh. 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 All right, here we go. So black, then gray, then white. You guys know the drill. Ugh. Just got a, a slab of paint on my fingernail. Whoop. That's Chris. There you go. All right. So now, uh, Catalyst is going to be a problem. It did. Okay. So you see that is? Buddy's accent is making me laugh. I'm trying to paint homeboy. <laughs> That's right, Andrew. Hi, right, man. I'm trying to keep it real out here. <laughs> I just got <laughs> You just do that. I had a I made a superhero. Uh, I forget what game it was. It was the Judge Dread Miniatures game or something. Uh huh. I made, a, I made a superhero named Judgmental Uncle. Oh. <laughs> and he was just the, the Judgmental Asian Uncle. You the doctor yet? Yeah. Last time I saw you, Christmas. You told me you in the 10th grade. You doctor yet? Okay, not yet. Oh, this the bad one, man. <laughs> you can be whatever you want. Engineer or doctor. <laughs> yeah. There are only a few good jobs in the world. Okay, listen to me. <laughs> There's a dentist. A doctor. A lawyer. <laughs> The, and here the thing, here the thing, right? You choose one though job, then you can choose something else. 
You choose the doctor, you can be the brain doctor. You can be the heart doctor. There's so many possibilities, man. You don't understand. You know, the funny thing about that is, like, I have all these nieces and nephews that are in their, like, you know, they're in their, they're starting to get in their 20s. So I'm the judgmental uncle now. <laughs> oh, are you like, you have good job yet? You have to be engineer or doctor. Why don't you get real jobs? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, don't hit him with that one. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, it's funny because I, I, I no, it's not. I don't want to say it's a similar problem, but it's pretty funny. It's like people ask me what I do because I, I work at a hospital now, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a scientist. They're like, that's it. <laughs> I'm, like, well, I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Last time I checked, that was pretty spectacular. <laughs> They're like, are you a scientific doctor? I'm like, no. I just, I'm a scientist. Why man. are you not doctor scientist? <laughs> yeah, why are you not doctor science? You know who else scientist? Doctor. That's doing weird stuff. Whatevs. Whatevs, he said. Dr. Science. <laughs> That's why the you, comment. Yeah, why are you not Dr. Science? <laughs> That's... Man, you're not applying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, trust me, Octave. I've gotten that more than once. They're like, that's it. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, wait a minute. It's so sad. This is actually a really painful memory for you, but we're still laughing. I mean, there's the old, there's all there's two ways that you can get rid of painful memories. You accept it and you laugh, or you're you just sit awake at night sometimes thinking. <laughs> you know, I like the I like the laughing about it method rather than staying awake at night and just being like oh, I'm not good enough. <laughs> yeah that ain't me and you're like all right there's that and then I'm gonna, almost ready to do the scary one. You not live to your full potential. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, this means we're being entertaining. So we're doing something right. <laughs> this yeah, I, it's a good thing I don't monetize this channel because this, <laughs> this would not fly. But we're both Asian, dude. So I mean, it should Oh, it, it doesn't matter. What? Yeah. Wait, so if a rapper makes a music Somebody video, from, like, The Verge or something is going to be super pissed if they watch this. Ten reasons why the two guys painting miniatures have internalized racism. <laughs> and you're like, what? what? It's like, wait, I thought Asian racism was all right. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to be racist towards Asian people. As long as it's funny. It's true, man. Like, you watch... You read those... I've had, you know, I've had, in the last, like, two years, I've had, like, young college guys, like, white guys come tell me, oh, you, you don't understand what it's like to be discriminated against. I'm like, what? <laughs> you, you know what it's like? <laughs> it's like, man, when I go up to an interview, I get a good job, man. That's hard. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I came... I'm like, you know, you know, I was born, like, in this country, my, the only one in my family, like, right after Vietnam, right? Like, we were literally pulling out of Vietnam when I was born here. 
and I was in Kansas. Like, put your, like, imagine. What do you think that's like? I was like, yeah, but you don't understand systematic racism. <laughs> Wait, are you, are you, really? Other? It's not racist if it's racist if it's against Asians or white people. You know? You know what they say? It's uh you know like Asian people can get offended at Asian jokes or are like Asian racists, like uh like I don't uh, some other race can be offended by other racist jokes. Mm-hmm. And then black black racist jokes, white people get offended by those jokes. Yeah, for real. It's so true. It's like, whoa, 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 what you you can be in an entire room filled with like people and you're like singing a rap song and they drop the word <laughs> and then you and if you're like the Asian guy in the back, like, yeah, and you say it, yeah. Like, most of the time people are gonna be like he was like, it's in a song. But then you're gonna have that one white friend who's like, whoa, 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 what'd you say? What'd you say, man? <laughs> I was like, whoa. He's like, you know that's not all right. And it's like, wait, dude, wait, wait, wait a second. Oh no, there it goes, there it goes. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Oh, I got He's like pulling the whole base off with him. Ooh. Watch. Oh, oh. Oh, oh tell yeah. me to sit down. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do what I did with. Uh, with vitriol, and I'm just gonna have to stick them on the weird base. Weird salt. Let's just do it. Let's just do it now, so I don't have to worry about it. Whoa! Just do it now before it gets too messy and too difficult to fix. You know, I think this model's basically done. Nice. It's like three colors. Yeah. The burr. Yeah, it's like a polar bear colors, like leather for the leather parts, and then like. Tusks or like <clears throat> bleached bone for the tusks in front, and then I'm just going to use liquid talent and see what happens. Nice. All right. Once they hear Vietnam, you're foreign. Foreign is a hilarious term for me, though. I don't know. I was. I. I'm sorry. I think it's. I just think racism is super funny. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I think the way society views racism is extremely funny. Yeah, well, no, I mean, to put it into perspective, like, I really, really like Blazing Saddles. It's, like, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's one of the, it's by far one of the most racist movies of all time, but it was very even-handed. Like, they went after everybody, and it was super funny. And now, you, like, you couldn't film 15 minutes of Blazing Saddles in today, today. Too many people, people would be fainting on couches, and it would be... It would just be sad. Like you couldn't do that. <clears throat> It'd be like Golden Compass disaster. Polar Bear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dang. All right. Nice Shoot. one. Hey, man. That's good. I like that one. All right. So now, once again, whoop, did it just not? Hold on. Hold on. Did I not drill all the way through or what? Yeah, I gotta do this now before. Wow. It's really not going in there. We're gonna see if liquid talent can uh, make this model pop. Oh, granted, my lighting's really bad here, so you can't really tell any detail right now, but we're gonna see if uh, liquid talent pulls it out, man. <clears throat> okay. See how good these stupid weird bases are? Just glue that in, and there, we're done. We don't even have to... I don't even have to worry about it. Don't even sweat it anymore. Just a good deal. I hate slot of bases with a passion. Hate them. All right, <clears throat> let's get some primer back on this thing.
looks like the the main problem I'm going to have with Catalyst is the entire base popping off the thing. It's still better than the problem I have. Let's move over to gray. Why you make big deal? So you're going to try to get the whole... Are you going to try to get the entire Hunter's roster done? Uh, the models I have, yes, yeah. but I mean, I don't know how good they're going to be. That's like, like nine of, models. Yeah, as of now, like, I don't know. I'm not super happy with Minx, but I mean, I'll play her just because, like, she's painted, you know? And, like, mm -hmm. I like the way Cena turned out. Like, it's a very simple model, you know? Or, yeah. I mean, simple paint scheme, but I, I like the way. What are those bases? These are stamped bases from Happy Sabuku. Cooking along here. Uh -oh. A little bit of a clog. We should have fixed it. <coughs> no, that made it worse. Okay. Did happen there. Big old loogie. The guild ball. <clears throat> Why you play soccer on board? Just go outside, play real soccer. <laughs> but dude, I can't knock people out when I'm playing soccer. I mean, What's I that? could. It's I can't knock people out when I'm playing soccer. <laughs> All right. <coughs> the 
now we go to white and the priming is done and we can do a little bit of color blocking while we got the time and the airbrush set up <coughs> right right oh bollocks i just ripped her head off literally <laughs> oh who are you painting, Zorola? Uh, Cena. Oh. Okay. <coughs> All right. So now we go to white. <coughs> And then after this, we start picking greens and blues and that kind of stuff. You make a sucker, man. Why does he do pharmacy while he plays soccer? <laughs> <laughs> You do the doctor of the pharmacy? I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, or, oh, oh, if you really want to hit him, and I'm going to step on some toes of my friends here. But it's like, you the doctor of the physical therapy? <laughs> like... That's gonna step on some of my friends' toes, but like, never like that's coming from an Asian perspective, not from <laughs> my perspective. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, she turned out not bad. Like, definitely like tabletop worthy. It just looks like a, a polar bear with leather armor. So, Thanks. like, I I definitely put a little blood on those tusks and like <coughs> inside the mouth. But I mean, like. Man, I am really rusty at painting because my signar and stuff turned out like ten times better than that. Looks good to me. Could just be the lighting. I'm like I'm taking a second look at me. She's not super bad. I mean like no, she's not terrible. Yeah, but I really do like the way these tracks came out. Nice. Finally, hello. Hey, what's up, Blade Wolf? Hey, what's up, Blade Wolf? How are you doing? I'm all the same. Yeah. Okay. Fourth Alchemist team is primed. Nice. So now we can let's do a little color blocking. <clears throat> Not much, just kind of worn from today. I hear you. It's a kind of a rough Friday. Just trying to get through it. It was. It was even my. It was my birthday today, and I still had a rough Friday, man. Do you do anything at uh, at work? I kind of wanted to keep it quiet since it was like my first week. So I was just like, I don't want you guys to do anything too special for me, you know? Oh. You know, when I, at the, the job I'm at, um, I didn't want to do anything for my birthday. 
And uh, the guys that reported to me got super mad about it. And they pulled me aside and they're like, hey, man, I get that you're trying to be, <coughs> you know, low key or whatever, but this is our excuse to go have lunch. So don't ever do that again. <laughs> oh. I was like, ah, oh, fair point. Okay. There's truth in that. <laughs> oh, it's your birthday? You're still not doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, see, this, this guy's got it. See, this, <laughs> <It's coming. laughs> this guy's got it. See, this guy knows what's up. Gets you know? it. He's he's an uncle to somebody. We'll just put <laughs> he's that. a judgmental uncle. Yeah, dude, he's an uncle to somebody, man. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Uh, so Sean Blade Wolf is saying, been liking the new Gotham miniatures, the Batman miniatures. Yeah, they look awesome. They that are was the so other exciting news today was the second edition Batman stuff. Which you gotta say. Pretty happy about it. I think all the changes are pretty good. I haven't seen anything to really cry about yet. So I was like 3D crafting with Nelson. Did they round up when they changed from centimeters to inches or did they round down? Um some in some cases up, in some cases down. Oh. I could see like that. movement kind of, that kind of went up. Uh, some of the other abilities kind of went down. Like, I think Batclaw went down a little bit. Base movement went up a little bit. Um, yeah, Batclaw was really strong. Um, lamp, lamps, like the light from lampposts went up. Uh, what else went down? So yeah, it's kind of, I, I guess, I guess more things went up. But there's still there were some things that went down. Yeah, be... I, oh, sorry. I, I threw crafted with Nelson. I was like, yeah, dude, I think it's gonna round up. Well, in the game, it tells you if you have to ha uh, have things, uh, and you're you know, you should round down. Mm. I don't I don't quite know what that means, but. All right, let's get some greens. Let's rock some greens. I like this green. I like this green. I want like a good, a deep green. That's an okay green. That's a pretty good green. What happened to that awesome deep green that I got? Can never find the paints that I want. That's not it. Yeah, that's seeming to be my problem right now. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. I thought I had this one. Oh, shoot. <clears throat> and I just put a bunch of paints back at the start of this feed. I was like, oh, I probably won't get around to doing any painting. Oops. Yeah, it's like I had a like an emerald green color that's really awesome. That airbrush is really nice too. And I will destroy the world finding it. Because it's super important. I will scour the earth to find this color. Why so serious? Why are you so serious? <laughs> Why so, so mad? It's all again. Oh, there it is. Yes. Found it. Got yes. Him. Tempted to get the entire set. What set are you talking about, Sean? <clears throat> I do not know of which you speak. Maybe he's talking about the kickoff set? I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe. All right. So we're going to start putting this green on. Boop. 
I like where this is going. Cena's or not Cena, uh Boombox. <laughs> Boombox man. I'm liking oh. where this is going. <laughs> For Batman. Green ball. Green, green. This dude will be green, Bane Crew, Gotham, Sirens, Joker, and Batman. <coughs> you know what? The one that you didn't list is the one I want to get. The uh, Blackgate Prisoners. Because I was going to buy the old ba Blackgate Prisoner set, but it's the old kit. And you know how much I hate putting together the old kits? Look how green this guy is. Ah, cha -cha -cha -cha. Dude, I'm having so much fun with Mad Hatter in uh, Batman. Last night... I did mind control on Deathstroke and uh, and Jason Todd. This is hilarious. <clears throat> Anything from pinning yourself. <laughs> That's true. Can't see me. I'm even gonna do Mercury with like a blue flame instead of a red one. I don't know. The red flame <laughs> makes him to me makes him look less like an alchemist and more like a circus performer. He's like a street performer. Like you gonna swallow the swallow the flame. He's like that guy at Ren Fair, you know, trying to collect sad hand jobs from the Oh, I shouldn't be talking about bad. <laughs> Do it, Octave. We already talked about Do racism. It. Do it. It was my, it was my uh my stereotypical Ren Fair performer guy. Trying to get the sad hand jobs from the from the Ren Fair groupie girls. Wait, those exist. What's that? I didn't even know Ren Fair groupie girls exist. Oh yeah, they do. That's weird. It's its own Ren Fair stuff is like its own culture. I know some people that, that that's what they do is they travel around with the Ren Fairs, and they just go to all the different Ren Fairs, and they swallow swords, and they throw falcons at people, and all kinds of, yeah, sad handy, dude. Huh. <clears throat> if you were, like, an extra from Game of Thrones, and you can prove you were an extra, like, you could get all the sad hand jobs you want at the Ren Fair. They're like, he was a city guard. He was in that one scene. Sean Bean was in it. That is weird. That is, like I'll be the first to say <laughs> that is weird. All right. I love nerd culture and all that, but that is weird. It's only sad if you're dressed as Pennywise. Oh, that is messed up. <laughs> that is a sad hand job indeed. When my wife and I are out in public, we always talk about who's in it for the sad hand jobs. So we try to find people that resort to weird shit 
so they can do so they can get bad hand jobs. What are you still doing up? Becoming doctor needs sleep. Okay, a lot of green on all these, on all the things. <coughs> that was a lot of green. All right, so now let's highlight that green. Man, I really want a game Sunday, but I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see if if my wife takes pity on me. You look bored. If I look sad enough at home. All right. So we're going to go in with this color, Hellblau. Hellablau. I think that means light blue or something. I have no idea. Well, we're going to put this on very specific parts of the model. And I always use the guild ball as the test to see how it's going to look. And the answer is weird. It doesn't really doesn't seem to do a whole lot. There we go. That looks okay. I'll be back in a sec, Octave. We gotta get something from the kitchen. Yup. <clears throat> Mint green. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. So this mint, the mint green areas are going to go even lighter. Once I get going. Ooh, be back. Yep. <clears throat> We call Hella Blau. And I need to do that on Catarist. Catarist store. So now we take a quick little break from the green. I'm going to switch over to a brown because <clears throat> I got to undercoat kind of the brass parts of the models because they're going to be like this mint green, green brass. I might, there might even be like some black or some gray in these. Night models still haven't made a ventriloquist with Mr. Scareface. This is all true. I'm hoping they make a 
<clears throat> Condiment King at some point. Condiment King would be pretty awesome. C-list villains, yes. <coughs> I also wish they would have the tick in Batman. The tick would be awesome. All right. Let's do a little brown, a little brun. This is going to be flask mostly. Flask. Flask. It's a Kilt flask. Man. Kite man. Oh, kite in Sportsmaster. Yes. And also, uh, what's it called? The Misfits. Because you can put Catman in that team. Any team that you can put Catman in is good. Dude, the one, oh, like, granted, I've only played Batman once, but Catman, I don't like that man. <laughs> Why don't you like Catman? He's so annoying to hit, dude. Catman's hilarious. I'm in there with uh, the guy from Watchmen. Uh, yeah. Oh, What's his name? Ozymandias. Ozzy, yeah. Doc. I'm in there with Oz fighting a cat man. And I'm like, dude, Oz can dodge bullets. He can beat up a cat man. Cat that's man the, is amazing. Yeah, that's not the case. <laughs> Let me, I'll, tell, I'll tell the folks at home right now, that is not the case. Ozzy gets creamed by the cat man. Cat man, um, for reference, like he held off Batman. For hours at one point. Just kept Batman at bay so that his friends could commit a crime. <laughs> well. Why you cat man? Why not cat doctor? Why not cat why doctor? Not, yeah, why not Dr. Cat? Engineer Cat. Why are you not chief of cat? Dr. Tetch is doctor. Why can't you be doctor? <laughs> Dr. Tetch. <laughs> why can't you be doctor? Dr. Tetch. Oh, I love Dr. Tetch so much. I love how this guy just has two propane tanks strapped to his back, as you do. <clears throat> Why he not doctor? You not doctor. Now that they have Sal Maroni, dirty Sal.
I'm getting her pants. Her pants. <laughs> She has brown, brown pants. Who else needs brown? Uh, nobody needs brown at the moment. That's good enough. All right, let's go back to green. <coughs> and let's do the third highlight color for green. Do I do Young Penguin or the Holiday Killer? Holiday Killer is amazing. I hope we get uh, King Shark and uh, Cheshire and uh, Knockout. I hope we get more of the Secret Six. King Shark, Cheshire, Knockout, uh, Ragdoll. We need all those. Does he schedule with Calendar Man? Probably. All right. So now, so now we're gonna go Verdigris. This is kind of a crazy color, and it's super thick. So really shouldn't be doing too much of this in the airbrush. This is like one of the thickest paints out there. So if it doesn't shoot, we'll know why. Just a super thick paint. Seems to be okay. Let's try it. Are you saying yes to more Secret Six? I totally agree. Although... I'm coming to the realization that Secret Six is the strongest team in Batman right now. Like, you know, they're still going to lose to Cruise, to standard Cruise, but as far as teams go, I think you can, you can make the best teams with the Secret Six roster. Whoa, you okay? Yeah, sorry. I was grabbing the mic because I wanted to like blow off some of the paint wetness. A little lightness there on Midas. Vitriol is also a super fun model to paint. Now we need to do some of the like gold highlight or the non-metallic, I should call it non-metallic brass. It's kind of what we're doing here on a flask. I think Chaska is my favorite model so far. Pretty rad model. Yeah, because like I was at the camera.
That's why I decided to do Octave. I decided to go camo pants and like camo. Oh, and cool. Better. Yeah, because I think that's what I wanted my hunters to feel like is kind of like <coughs> old school, like US. That's why I was when I was painting minks and Cena, I wasn't really inspired because I'm like, where am I going to paint? Ca <gasps> Ooh, Cena's actually got this. I can paint camo on that. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Nice. Bur, bur, dun, dun. Dude, yeah, she's so cool. I really like the bear. Mm. Dude, Revenant, man. Burr. The bear. Mm. Yeah, I'll do do the camo on this one. All right. Let's see what we got. And then once this is done. I'll do a little bit of gray on the bases. Just a little bit on homeboy's backpack. Good enough. And now we'll just put a little gray on the uh, <coughs> on the basing, and then that's all I'm allowed to do tonight, because they're not dry enough to actually take a brush to. Because I'll start knocking them around and we don't want to do that. But as far as, you know, is it feasible to have all this painted by the end of tomorrow night's painting session? Absolutely. Very, very feasible. Because a lot of the groundwork is already done. Okay, I need... Ooh, this is a good gray. I get gray. You guys have any questions, comments, threats, anything while we're just doing a painting? A soccer man? I don't know. I think now the camo, because if I keep the camo theme throughout the entire squad, I feel like that could be pretty tight. Cool. Yeah, so we'll keep we'll keep on keeping on. Minx is the odd girl out where I oh, know we I could put camo on her somewhere. <coughs> you could. I could. I should, dude. Uniform. Let's see how this does. This may be too light. It's a little light. It's okay though. It's a little bit light. That's fine. Oh, Octave, were you able to order the Chibi Miniatures by any chance? Oh, you know, I haven't I haven't tried that. Oh, and you just reminded me of something else I was supposed to do. I don't know if Nelson's watching this feed right now, but it's supposed to be something for Nelson. Hold on.
almost done. Okay, it's dry, it dries down to a much better, more granite looking color. Okie doke, let's let those dry for a minute. I'm gonna look for something for Nelson here. <coughs> yeah, I wish I could keep painting because I'm on a pretty, really good pace right now, but I just built the models. The, the epoxy on the bases is still drying. So I want it, I want that to harden first before I... Alright. <laughs> and it's midnight anyway, so. Oh, that it is. So I gotta get up early tomorrow. Feed my kids breakfast. Let me just let's just go through the where we're at. So you can see there, a little flask. The guild ball. Here is a catalyst so far. I know it's all just basic color blocking. Calculus. Midas. And you got mercury. And last but not least, you got vitriol. All right, cool. <coughs> all right, well. Thanks for hopping on, everybody. Thanks for uh, for joining me, Andrew. Yo. Godspeed. Continue painting. Uh, right. Would be cool if you want to pay, post some pictures of that. It'd be pretty awesome. I will try if if I can finish the entire squad. That way, the whole camo theme really does shine. Nice. So. All righty. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a good night, and I'll catch you guys later. Night.